hi there this is uh, shrikanth sare so in this uh, lesson uh, we are going to learn about uh, so how to uh, create a structure uh, dynamically okay so let me go to the full screen here just a second okay so in the last couple of lessons uh, we have uh, discussed how to create uh, array dynamically okay so which has no uh, length limit so basically the problem with uh, arrays is that it has a size of it has a size of fixed okay so if in the runtime if you want uh, to allocate uh, more data or store more data it is not possible uh, by using a static array so if you take a dynamic array uh, which is created using uh, various uh, dynamic memory allocate uh, functions like uh, malloc or uh, cloc uh, so you get the facility of uh, having an array which is uh, Created dynamically, and in the runtime, we can have uh, we can specify uh, the size, and then uh, that many uh, number of uh, uh, blocks or that much memory is allocated, and your uh, array, and you can store uh, as many as uh, uh, data elements you wanted uh, in that array. So that is a nice way to uh, in order to save uh, some memory. So in the same way, we can uh, create uh, structures as well. Okay, so as you know that in C, uh, struct is a type uh, which is uh, user defined uh, data type uh, in which uh, uh, we have uh, different uh, uh, types of uh, data elements stored under a single name uh, when it comes to an array uh, only we have a homogeneous uh, type of data representation uh, okay so in uh, in some situations uh, we need to have uh, uh, structures uh, which were uh, uh, being allocated uh, the size uh, in runtime uh, dynamically uh, sometimes we need not know what is the size of the structure is going to be okay so we'll look uh, all these things uh, through an example here okay so first let me uh, do all the basic stuff like uh, header files and all just a second actually i will reach actually call your reach so all the basic uh, stuff i'm putting here uh, let me now let me take a structure here okay so as we all know that uh, the structure is uh, created using a keyword struct here. So let's name the structure or structure as stu. Okay. So let us put some uh, data elements here. Let us say that uh, R and O let it be a roll number and let us say uh, a name or something like this. So I'm just keeping the structure as simple as possible here. Okay. So we can just uh, close the structure here by putting the semicolon. Okay. So if you want, you can uh, uh, create the variable here itself, or you can do it in the main also. Let us do it in the main part here. Uh, let us take the main function, and let us uh, have a variable for our structure. For that, you can you again can use the struct keyword, and let us say struct to as one. Okay. So if you want, you can uh, assign some data here. It's as well. Uh, let me say one and Shrikant, which is my name here. Okay. So then we are done with our uh, structure. We have taken a simple structure and we have taken a single structure variable which is known as S1 here and we are done with our uh, storing the data. Okay, So we can a uh, wide variety of ways are there to store uh, data into the members of the structures. We can assign directly as we have done in this example or we can use individual uh, variable names something like this. We can uh, say something like this S1. Okay, We can take another variable here struct s2. Uh, s2 or something like this you can take something like this and you can say s2 dot uh, name and all and so on and so forth okay let us do that also okay let's do dot uh, name uh, let us say some sanjay or something like this and s2 uh, dot uh, r and o which is uh, represented for the roll number or the typical data for a student okay so you can so where where you have a lot of different ways are there you can follow anything okay so it is not the case for us okay so if you just uh, in this example i have just taken a two uh, variables uh, let me uh, print the data mm, let me do something here uh, meaningful understandable in the example uh, let us say that the, the data of student s1 is equal to okay, and all these messages are just for the purpose of understanding here okay uh, student as one we can have uh, another printf statement here uh, let us say that slash and slash t uh, name is equal to so percentage yes comma yes one dot name okay so very straightforward thing here and let us uh, do the same thing for the other uh, member also which is going to be the roll number 
uh, R and O. Let us see roll number here. Since we are doing the messages, uh, the purpose of what here. Just one dot R and O. Okay. So if everything goes well, and if you uh, don't have any uh, problems within our program, if you run the execute the program here. So everything goes fine. We have just uh, got the data of student S1, uh, which is name is uh, Srikanth and roll number is one here. Okay. So if you want, uh, so if you want to take another uh, store uh, data, uh, another uh, for another student, uh, what you are going to do is, uh, if you, uh, the most common thing which we do is we take another struct and we say S3, and we repeat. We tend to repeat the same uh, process of again uh, storing uh, manually the data and so on and so forth. Okay, and this is not at all the best practice here. Uh, if you want, uh, some uh, sometimes we tend to take array. Okay, so instead of uh, avoiding uh, this kind of uh, keep on taking the variables uh, S1, S2, S3, and S4 and so on and so forth. And what happens if you want uh, some more variables? If you, you can't say you can't say like this here. Okay, so S4 or you can say S5. And S6 and the list goes on and so on and so forth. Okay, let me run out this instance. Small mistake has been done. Okay, so S4 and S S4 and S5 and uh, S6 and so on and so forth. Uh, here we are. If you are taking like this, if you, that is not a good practice here. Okay, so you can, or else you can uh, uh, declare the variables here itself uh, at the beginning. Uh, something like this. In a chain format, you can say something like this: S5, comma S6, uh, and S7, and so on and so forth. You can take some variables at the very beginning, uh, where you have uh, declared the structure here. This is not a good practice because uh, if you can take uh, 100 uh, uh, structure variables to so store data of 100 students. Okay, so uh, to avoid uh, uh, this problem, uh, mostly what we tend to do is. Uh, we take an array of structures here. Okay, so uh, we have that facility in C, not only in C, in other languages like C++ or uh, many uh, other uh, structured programming languages. We can take an array of structures here. Okay, so I'm declaring an array of structures. Uh, let us say some uh, 50. Okay, so let us 50 or 20 or whatever it might be. Okay, so let us say 50. Okay, so here we have uh, created an array of structures. Okay, just executed the program. Nothing happens. So here, instead of taking the variables, uh, keep on taking the variables. Let me put it in the comment here. Instead of taking like this, structures to S1, comma S2, S3, and so on and so forth until S100. You can just put a simple variable known as array. Create an array of structures here, and you can store the data. Okay. So what happens if in the runtime? So this is a good and instant solution for this problem of uh, keeping on creating the variables. But what happens if in the runtime we need uh, more than 50? Or what happens if you want to store uh, the data for the 51st student? Or what happens if you are uh, not using all the 50 elements and you are just using uh, the 10 uh, 10 elements here? Okay. Or you are just uh, storing the data data for the 10 students, the remaining uh, 40 uh, spaces which were being allocated uh, will be wasted. Okay, so it will be wasted. We have declared the variable. Uh, okay, so if you want here, you can check the size of the structure here. So printf uh, slash and slash t. Let us check the size of the structure. The size of uh, struct array is, is equal to percentage d, comma. Uh, let us say the size of let us use the size of operator uh, to know the size here how much size has been allocated for the structure uh, for the array of structures yes here okay so if you execute the program so you get 400 bytes here okay so total 400 bytes have been allocated uh, for our structure the reason it gets allocated 400 because uh, dynamically uh, to do um, so roll number has uh, the pointer as four bytes uh, individually okay so if you check before that if you check the size of uh, structure s1 or uh, simply the size of structure s2 okay let us know that how you got the value 400 there okay. so practically uh, let us uh, take the size of structure s1 here okay so let us say that the size of struct s2 is equal to percentage t comma size of s2 Okay, so this is the uh, structure which we have uh, created here, an empty structure, just an empty declaration of structure with a pointer variable to the character and, uh, and an integer. Okay, if you run the code here, 
So what you get is a okay. So the reason you are getting here eight is uh, because uh, the pointer gets allocated here four bytes here. The pointer gets allocated four bytes. Okay, and the value and the uh, and the integer variable uh, since we are using this uh, Visual Studio compiler, it gets uh, four bytes allocated. Here. Yes, total eight bytes we have uh, for this structure. And if you take uh, fifty uh, size of an array, size of an array of structures of size fifty. And you get 8 into, uh, 8 into 50, which is 400. And that's the reason we are getting here as 400. Okay, so quickly, if you want to uh, print data, or if, let, let us uh, allocate some uh, allocate some data into that uh, 50 uh, structures here, 50 uh, array of structures there. Let us say uh, i is equal to 0, i less than uh, 50, and i plus plus. I'm just taking a for loop, uh, taking a for loop here. And what I'm uh, doing is uh, simply uh, saying s of i is equal to i plus 1. Okay, so it's not, it's not the way. So s of i dot row number is equal to. In the, in the place of, uh, uh, since we are taking here the array of structures, uh, so what happens in the background is uh, if you have an introduction, if you know the knowledge, if you have the knowledge of uh, arrays concept here, so what do you, um, so array, what happens? Array, the index of an array starts from 0. So if you want to allocate some data uh, into the array, that's what you're going to do with the help of for loop here. So S of 0, S of 1, S of... Uh, so what happens in the background is, uh, let me remove this uh, comment. Or let me keep that. Okay, so what I'm doing is, let me uh, put a comment here, uh, just below this one. So what happens here is, uh, so something in the background in the memory gets created like this, okay. So S of 0, S of 1 and uh, S of uh, 2, something like this until, uh, excuse me, something like this until S of uh, 49, one less than the size of the array. Okay, that is the case here. Okay, so until 49, uh, total 0 to 49, 50 uh, blocks are getting created in the memory in the background. So for that we can't straight away uh, since we are using a malloc function. Uh, so uh, oh, sorry, uh, since we are uh, tend to use uh, uh, so since nothing uh, consists. Okay, so if you want uh, without assigning something, if you want to try to check it out. Uh, so what happens if you're, what what data you are going to get? Okay, simply garbage or uh, it might not uh, take. Nothing happens. Nothing stores that garbage stores. If you say something like this, printer slash and slash t. Uh, Roll number, let us say roll number is equal to percentage D comma S of I dot roll number. Okay, so just I have taken an array of uh, structures and trying to print something here. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so what happens here is uh, very sillyly uh, all the uh, what we call uh, the garbage values uh, got stored for all the 50 students here. Okay, so this is a very uh, bad kind of uh, programming practice. We can straight away. Uh, show the user uh, the garbage values. Let us remove this uh, slash in here and we will see here what happens here. Okay, run the program once again. So, all the garbage values uh, got created for the reason it's not showing here. Okay, put slash t once again. Okay, so all the garbage values uh, get got stored, and what happens if you uh, do the same thing for the data member uh, name here okay let us see what happens then slash t or so let's put it slash in here okay slash t names is equal to or else uh, name is equal to let us say uh, percentage yes for uh, name and s of uh, i dot name okay so let's execute the thing here Error. Okay, so access is denied. So here uh, you can straight away uh, do for as you do for the row number since uh, it's dealt with the string uh, string pointer, okay, character pointer. Since the reason we have taken here it's as a character pointer, it's not going to work for us sometimes. See, it's breaking here. Okay, so not not a good practice uh, to do uh, those kind of uh, things here. Uh, okay, so let's. Uh, uh, stop uh, debugging here okay it's not a good practice to do uh, all this kind of uh, stuff let us let me put the comment here comment out these statements uh, 
okay so before that uh, before uh, taking that uh, before uh, uh, showing the data what uh, what it contains uh, let us uh, what, uh, let us uh, allocate the structure okay so let, let us allocate the structure uh, or let me say something like this let me put the whole thing once again let me copy paste the whole thing here the uncomment uh, statements let me try to uh, allocate uh, some data into the structure okay so into the area of structures here let me do that thing let me say uh, sfi dot rno is equal to i plus one okay and sfi dot name is equal to some empty okay or else let me write my name my surname which is the sorry okay so now if you have uh, the now you have the facility of uh, not getting your code uh, break in here okay we have some content there we don't have any garbage or any null values or something like that but we have uh, the freedom to print show something to the user here okay so if you execute the program so look what happens here okay so name and role number uh, got printed all the way so since i have taken uh, the role number uh, since i have taken uh, the variable i to initialize uh, to the role number value so it gets incremented and stored into that uh, member and since i have taken a, a single uh, um, just my surname instead of a name here it got printed okay so all this is okay with the case of an array if you are uh, using it as for 50 variables or 40 variables this is the one another uh, method so our intention here is to ask the user uh, in such a way that how many uh, members of uh, students how many students he wanted in uh, in case of uh, dynamically okay it's not 50 or uh, 1 or 2 as we did in the case of structure variables so here uh, let me take a variable let me take an uh, n o or n simply n and let me put a message here saying that printer slash and slash t enter the number of students okay so how many students you wanted uh, to store the data you are asking them dynamically okay so percentage d comma ampersand n okay so not, not in case of, if you want in the runtime you can have as many as low as 10 or if you want you can have as many as 100 so if you are uh, okay so as many as 100 okay so let me uh, do uh, let, now let me do allocate that thing okay so before doing that we need to have a structure pointer okay so this is the key thing here uh, we need to say something like this struct ss okay struct pointer structure pointer okay so this is nothing but a structure pointer so when we are dealing with dynamically allocating our structure or dynamically creating our structure in the runtime or allocating uh, the number of uh, uh, students uh, dynamically so we need something like this we need a structured pointer as we have done in the dynamic arrays so let me put a pointer here pointer to a structure pointer to a structure okay pointer to a structure okay so now what we are going to do is uh, we are taking this pointer here and with the help of our malloc function i'm just casting the uh, name of the structure here in order to avoid uh, the conversion uh, errors okay so i'm using the malloc function here okay so i'm using the malloc function i think that this code should be in the very beginning because we need that value of n here okay so I'm just placing that in the very beginning here okay so using the malloc uh, function what i'm doing is uh, n into size of ss okay so what is the size of SS is automatically uh, 8 and the number of uh, students or number of uh, uh, the, num the what is the size of the that structure you need you are providing with the help of a variable n here okay so that's what uh, we have done in this uh, statement if the user wanted if the user uh, enters the number 5 and it just allocates the of only 5 students or 5 uh, size of array is going to be here five that's it okay so let us uh, put it manually okay let me say something like this print if uh, or to say let, let me take a for loop here okay so again for loop i is equal to zero i less than 
I understand Gyan. Okay, since it is uh, the number of students is in here. Okay, so let me uh, do one thing. Okay, let me instead of taking the value from the keyboard, I'm just putting uh, directly assign it directly here. SS of I dot excuse me. This is of I dot the small mistake here. Okay, so this is of I dot. Okay, so it is did a small mistake here. Uh, to forgot to identify the name of our structure here. Okay, so if everything goes well, since we have uh, two errors here. A second, 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 just have a second. Have finish. Have finish. I mean, look, is an identifier. Identifier not found. Okay, back we are. Uh, we have just forgot to add this uh, key header file here. That's the reason our uh, code is not allowing us to execute here. Okay, so here we have. I have taken a pointer to a structure, and I have, and I am uh, trying to grab the value here. I'm uh, trying to grab the value of uh, n, and uh, that many number of uh, uh, structs or that many number of students we are going to uh, allocate it. We are going to be allocated, and we are just assigning the some uh, values into it. Okay. So what I'm doing here is uh, ss of i dot r n o, which is going to be the whole number. Let me do the same thing here. I plus one. Okay. And let us uh, uh, put the name to be blank here. Ss of i dot name. Let me put it uh, blank or let me put it uh, some god or something like this okay so whatever uh, you wanted here let me take this uh, printf uh, thing once again here i'm just copying and pasting the code once again since the code is same does not change all the time uh, ss of i and ss of i dot name and here it's going to be n okay so let me uh, execute the code here so if everything goes well in the end but it asks us for the number of uh, students here okay so th this time it's not going to 50 directly allocating the data to the 50 students or uh, here if you want a three it just takes three students okay so for the three students it just uh, what it does is uh, it allocates the row number and name the output is a little bit messy here let me uh, keep keep track of the output here okay so only if uh, only the uh, slash ends here okay so many slash ends we have slash ends slash t okay and at the ending just to uh, let me put a message printf let us have this line let us have some stars or something like this okay it just asks for the number of students here so let me say some four okay so if you observe here uh, we have just got uh, i'm just i have just given the four as the total count of the total number of students here it just allocated uh, it just taken the four students uh, four students uh, create the size of an uh, size of an array of structures of four size and have just taken uh, allocated those four values here okay so here if you want you can uh, uh, put the values uh, dynamically also uh, instead of i'm just assigning here you can use the scan function and you can uh, uh, take the values uh, dynamically and uh, store them and you can reproduce the values with the help of uh, another uh, for loop okay and in this uh, whole example this is the key thing here uh, here we have uh, taken uh, the pointer uh, to a structure and we have just by the help of a malloc function uh, we have uh, just allocated uh, the size of a structure uh, size of a structure of uh, that many uh, number of students okay so in the runtime if uh, uh, to take here 100 happily the hundred students get allocated and the, no, and the name is going to be the same because i have just put the same value and the roll number gets changed change here because i am dynamically giving the value or uh, putting assigning the value of i in the test with the for loop here the total number of students got created if you check the roll number uh, it's going to be 100 if you, so roll uh, students 100 students got created and uh, each student has a roll number uh, unique roll number of 98 99 and so on and so forth okay 
So this is the good example and last but not the least, you know, never forget to free the memory of uh, the structure. Let us say the free SS, okay. So you must free the memory, uh, whatever the structure you have uh, taken, okay. So if you say uh, some 10, 10 students get allocated and data is being stored in those structured members and automatically uh, when you come back, uh, your structure is going to be freed, okay. Just a sec here. A small problem. Okay, so that's all about uh, taking uh, or creating a structure dynamically and allocating uh, some data. Okay, let us the free thing, uh, the free function we will discuss in a separate lesson how to uh, free a dynamically allocated structure. Okay, so this is all about uh, run the, for the program for the one last time here. Ask us, ask us simultaneously if you put 1000 here, it just keeps on creating a, a 1000 a, a array of structures of size 1000 and it just allocates whatever the dummy values we have given and just displays those values. Okay, so hope you like the tutorial. Uh, see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.